Um, hello, everyone. Um, thank you very much for joining in. Um, can you guys hear me? Am I audible enough? Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes, please. Great. Great. Yeah. Um, thanks a lot again for I mean joining in today. So today's session is basically more along the lines of our CV, as I mentioned in our communication. Um, to start with, I'll just uh. Start it in the form of a conversation where I brainstorm with you the various sessions to a CV, get to see what you guys think about it as well. Then after that, we'll move on to the technical details of it. That is where we try and then use LaTeX um, to draft it. So um, first and first, let me quickly give you guys an outline of what uh, we expect to see at the end of today's discussion if we are to follow whatever um, approach that we agree on. Uh, so this is going to be an outline of a, of a typical CV. Um, this might be relevant to, I mean, academia or perhaps um, your work experience. For, but for today's discussion, I'm going to base it on um, your educational background because you are applying to a grad school. So this format will be the most appropriate in my view. Uh, so you start by basically introducing yourself um, and that's the header who you happen to be. So your name is Farouk Abdul Salam. That's my, my name. You just basically write it there. If you happen to have a website, this is going to be very important. If you have a website, you can try and then link your website to your CV. If you have links to those um, related works that you've done in the past, you can equally attach them to your CV. So in my case, you can clearly see that it's boldly written Farouk Abdul Salam, but there is a link to it that um, will take you directly to where I prefer you to look. So here, when you click on it, it will take you directly to my website. So that's the beauty of uh, LaTeX. And I think um, you can equally do that in um, in Word as well. So um, just keep in mind. So the next question is, what if I don't have a website? I think that's fine. If you have a LinkedIn profile, you can equally link your name to your LinkedIn profile. So for instance, my first name is linked to my website and my I mean, surname. It's linked to my LinkedIn profile. So when you have to click on my surname, it will take you directly to my LinkedIn profile. Get to see what I what I happen to be interested in posting. I mean, working on blah blah blah. So these are some of the things that you can keep an eye on when you are drafting a CV, and that's more along the lines of attaching your work, your profile to your CV in a more direct approach. It's hidden, but it can be clicked. Now, the second part of it is basically um, your qualification. So I think most of you happen to be undergrad or master student on the program. So you can just write um, maybe undergrad or graduate economic student or whatever you think might, I mean, capture you in a very short description. So I happen to be a PhD economist and my work in the industry, uh, I picked up data science related uh, projects. So I worked on it, so I'm a data scientist as well. So in that case, this is what I think defines me in a, in a line or two. Then your address, if you think your address is relevant. So here I'm using the address of my former school. You can use whatever address you think might be relevant. Again, as you might have realized, yeah, as soon as you get to my address, it, it shows you a direct link as well. So when you click on my address, it will take you directly to the, web, um, the home page where I... I really want you to look at, right? So that has to do with the Department of Economics where I had my PhD. You can have a look at the faculty there, how solid they are, what type of work we do over there. And then comes um, your contact details. So, I mean, now it's okay to have your phone number if someone wants to reach you, especially when you're looking for a job. So it's okay to put it there. Um, if, if you're not comfortable with it, you can take it out as well. Um, you can put in your email address there. Now you can see that as soon as you get to my email address, it's also asking you, hey, do you want to send an email to me? And there's a link to that as well. That will take you directly to uh, the Gmail and you can quickly send me a message and hopefully I can reply. And you realize that for these... um links to contact me, there is an icon that speaks to that. So here there is a phone 
I mean, icon that shows you that this is my phone number. Here, there is the email button that shows you that this is my email address. And here, this is going to be my website as well. And there's a link to that as well. So when you click on that, it will directly take you to my website. At the same time, it shows you, hey, this is a, this is a website page that you are trying to get into. Um, yeah, so when we used to be virtual, um, occasionally you might want to communicate with someone and you go like, hey, can you send me a Zoom link? If you have a standard Zoom link that you just want to, I mean, send out where you can just quick get in touch quickly with someone, you can equally attach that to that as well. But now that things are no more virtual, you can equally take it out. So it's all up to you. And again, these are linkable. You can search it, you can use it, directly get in touch with the person you're interested in. Citizenship is... Um, it's a bit dicey here in the West. So here in the West, if you happen to complete your PhD without um without a Canadian citizenship or PR, or perhaps a US citizenship or PR, it becomes very difficult for companies or uh, academic institutions to look at your CV because it's very hard for them to hire you. So in that respect, you probably might want to make people aware of your citizenship if you have a PR or if you have a citizen, um, Canadian citizenship or whatever. So in my case, I, I happen to have the Canadian citizenship. So I made, I, I made it very bold. I mean, pretty much colorful as well, just so they get to see that, hey, you're not going to find, you know, you're not going to find any difficulty hiring me in terms of getting any paperwork done. I'm already a citizen, so that will make it easier for you. In your case, as um, current graduate students trying to get into their master's program or the PhD, I don't think this is going to be relevant. So if you are to see this on my CV, get to know the reason why. So this is going to be just the header, introducing yourself giving them the contact details, um, any link to your website or LinkedIn or any where your work is present, let them see. And if they want to get in touch, they can equally get in touch. So that's the header. Now, let me pause here. If there are any questions to that, let me know. If there are no questions, then I can move on to the next uh, sections of the uh, CV. I give us um, 10 seconds. If there are questions, let me know. If there are no questions, um, I can move ahead. So where you wrote PhD, mm. you said if we are undergrads or graduate students, we are supposed to write undergrads. Uh, so PhD is more like doctor of, that's doctor of philosophy. I just mm. want to find out if it's, um, let's say, so I'm interested in, an MSc program at the University of British Columbia. So should it be MSc or should write graduate students? Um, do, do you have um do you have the MSc already? No, I don't. I have a BSc at the moment. Yeah, so I don't think you should you should write MSc. So the PhD here, I mean, tell them that I already have a PhD, right? And this is not really relevant for undergrads. You can take it off. This is mostly for me because I already have a PhD and I'm going to, into the industry. So that's why I'm trying to make it more apparent for them to see that, hey, this guy already has a PhD and he qualifies for this particular job. Now, if, if you're undergrad, I don't think this will be relevant. You can just take it, take it off. Now, the reason why I'm trying to um, discuss this aspect of my CV with you guys is I realized that most of you were asking, can you share your CV with me? Can you share your CV with me? And um, I've been a bit silent about it. If I'm to share this particular CV without you guys getting to know why I'm putting something where, it might be a bit confusing. So here, there's an opportunity for me to explain in detail, get to tell you that this is not needed. Take it off if I'm to share my CV with you. This is needed. You can, I mean, do this. You can take away this. Yeah. So maybe the PhD is not needed for you as an undergrad who just graduated getting to MSc. Oh, yeah. If you have any questions, let me know. Anthony, go ahead. Okay, so um, what if you have your undergrad and then you're already in an industry? Can you put your company's address or something over there? Yeah, you can. Um, if that's the address that you feel comfortable with, you can equally, I mean, put it there. Yeah, I think some people are not very comfortable putting in their personal address. So, but again, um, if if this is something that has to do with they're also getting a reference for you and you don't have a, I mean, it's dicey, right? So 
industry is a bit it's a bit dicey sometimes there's a bit of politics here and there so it might be the case that you don't really like your current position you're, you're trying to move to another company you don't have the very a very good rapport with your current manage, manager or management putting such addresses might put you at a risk for instance if they are to request for a reference they might go directly to the address that you provided on on the cv so just be mindful of that as well okay yeah sure um anyone with any, any other question before we move on to the sections um i believe that should be enough for now okay good now let's go on to um the how I tend to segment my CV. So with this profile, initially I wasn't a huge fan. Maybe even now I might not necessarily be a huge fan for the undergrads uh, going into um, their graduate program. But I realized that some of you do have a summary of yourself basically trying to pitch your interests. I'm um, this, blah, blah, blah. This is who I happen to be. This is my interest in the first two or three lines of your of your CV in the in the form of a summary or profile or whatever you might want to call it. So here to give you guys opportunity to do same if you are a huge fan of such um summaries, um this is how to go about it. I do have it in my case because I'm coming from industry trying to look at another position, so I kind of made it a bit more, I mean upfront. So if you are someone who is very much interested in writing the summary at the beginning, this is how to go about it. So I just gave a brief summary as to who I happen to be in terms of my qualification, my interests, what I've done in the past. And also, um, you might have realized that I'm attaching a link to what I claim to have. So for instance, I claim to have taught a lot of courses in statistics and economics, whatever. So this is my teaching dossier. So if you if you had to click it, it will take you directly to my teaching dossier, which is basically on my website. Right, so that's the beauty of, of such CVs where you can just highlight something, someone does not necessarily have to tell you, hey, can you send me this document? No, you've already, I mean, embedded everything that needs to be seen in your, in your, um, or on your website and you're attaching just the link to it. So as soon as they, they click on the link, it will just take them directly to the document that you would like them to see. So here, I'd like them to see my teaching history so as soon as they touch on it, they can just go in and see my teaching history. They don't need to request a document from me. I also mentioned that I do have teaching evaluations. This is the link to it. And as soon as you click on that, that will send you directly to my teaching evaluations. You can read whatever evaluations students have about me. If, if this is a profile that interests you, you can um, read more about it and get in touch with me and happy to talk to you about um more about myself and how I can be of help to your uh, school. So that's a whole idea here. So adding such CVs, adding the links to your profiles, adding your awards is very, is very, I mean, it's very clean. It's more professional. You can just go uh, attach it. No, nothing, um, no difficulty. I mean, seen and everything is much easier to work with. So that's gonna be the profile part. So if you are someone interested in writing a profile before you even come to the education, the skill side, this is how to go about it. If you are not interested in the profile part, you can just highlight it and take it off. So that'll be the profile. Now, if there are no questions on that, let me know. If there are no, if there are no questions, we can move on to the next one. Please I have a question. Go ahead, yeah. So please, with all that you have on your CV and three prospective graduate students that you do not have, mm -hmm. uh, does it have an influence or effect on our application? Because I have realized that all that you are seeing, I do not have them. And so I'm wondering if the graduate school admission committee consider some of these things. No, I think it doesn't. I think it doesn't at all. And again, the reason why I'm, I'm making this... Um aspect of my CV pretty much upfront is um, the history that I, I, I just, I mean, spoke about initially. That is to say, most of the students were interested in getting to, I mean, see my CV, share my CV with them. And I've been reluctant to do that because of the history, because of the difference that I might have and you wouldn't have. So if I'm to share my CV with you, you might, uh, you might be like, hey, this is something that I don't have and it might, uh, it might not necessarily motivate you enough, right? So here I'm just trying to make things more, I mean, 
explain it in detail. So if you have to come across my CV, which I hope to share on the page after today's discussion, you get to know this is a reason why Farouk has this on his CV. And he mentioned clearly that I don't necessarily have to have it as a graduate, as an undergrad. So I can take this off. I can attach this. So just, just understand, if you have to come across this, this CV, just get to know that not everything, you don't necessarily have to put everything there. Does that, does that I mean, answer your question? Yes, please. Yeah. Thank you very much. Sure, sure. And with the website, I think let me also quickly mention the issue of the website. I think website is very easy to create. Um, if you go to Google Docs or if you have Google, I think they have this Google website. I think I used that one to create my 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 website. It's very, very easy. So if you have any spare time, try working around it, see how to create your own website using the Google, I mean format. And uh, maybe with time you can master. I did. I I think I just, in my case, I used was it a week? So let me see. I used I think a week to create the website. I just went to this Google Doc and started playing around it, and I was able to I mean get a sense of it. So after some few iterations, I was able to put everything together and get this website. So I really encourage you guys. Um, as I try to push the ideas of different softwares like LaTeX. Uh, the experiment that we are designing, the website, uh, just have it at the back of your mind that these are pretty much useful things that you might be having as a graduate student when you are to come here, that is to say the West, and it will help your profile a lot. So have it up at the back of your mind. I'm now introducing the idea of LaTeX. I've also introduced the idea of uh, experiment. I'm now trying to, I mean, push the idea of website. Hopefully when I have time, I can take you guys through how to design a website. And uh, with this, you can have several, I mean, skill sets to your portfolio. So that, that should be it. You shouldn't be scared. It's mostly trying to explain what my CV happens to be and how that will be different from yours and how you can leverage on my CV for yours. Any question? Um, additional questions? Okay. Now, this is um the education part is very important that it starts with education with education um there are a couple of things that you probably might want to keep in mind the name of the school the program you studied the class you ended with the location of the school as well as the dates you completed these five things are very very essential to your education and that's being captured here right so here if you are to if, if, if you happen to be from University of Ghana, it's very important that you mention University of Ghana. Very broadly written there. Then the program you studied. So I did statistics and economics. So I have it there, Bachelor of Arts. Then the graduation class, you can put it here. And also I realized if you have a very good GPS wall, you can equally put it there. Maybe a crazy 3.9 over 4.0, which is like crazy. It's a first impression. You can put it here, maybe four, I mean, first class into bracket 3.9 over 4.0. And people will go like, wow, this guy's very brilliant. It's more along the lines of creating that first impression. So this is gonna be your education part. As I mentioned, these five key elements are very, very essential. Now back to, I think, Kenneth's question. So Kenneth, you realize that I took away my master's program from this CV and I also took away my PhD program from this CV. I'm just trying to make it a bit more related to what you guys are currently trying to design, right? So here I'm thinking in the form of an undergrad. So this will speak to an under undergrad presenting his educational um, credential. So after your university, before your university, what happened? So there's always that chronology that you need to, I mean, keep in mind. You went to high school before you came to your university. So if you are just an undergrad, I think I would advise you attach your, your secondary school to it. But if you're already a master's student, maybe your secondary school would not be relevant at all. But if you're an undergrad, your secondary school might be relevant. Now, why is this the case? Some of the programs that you trying to, I mean, get into like economics and the rest, they will require you to have some math training, statistics training, whatever training that might be relevant to the program. So if, for instance, I'm going to study master's in a university in Canada in economics and they require me to have math, and I know very well that I did math in, um, in, the, in my um, undergrad and I also did math in my um, high school, 
I'll go ahead and add my, my high school credential to it, but be more specific that I do also have a math training to it as well, right? So that can give you an, ad an additional plus. So that's why I mentioned relevant courses. I know in a secondary school, you take like seven or eight courses, but I'm just, I mean, narrowing it down to these two courses with well, the very first one being the math, which I think might be relevant for my master's application. So that's how to think about it as you put on uh, your educational credential and how to play around it. And also, if you look at University of Ghana, you realize that I do have a link to it as well. So if, for instance, the, depart the department trying to assess you don't necessarily know what University of Ghana is, you're giving them the opportunity to do so by just clicking on this. And as soon as they click, it might just, just take them to the University of Ghana webpage, read about University of Ghana, get to know. You can equally uh, maybe take, I mean, within economics and statistics, maybe put the department link to that, to that, I mean, to that side, they can go to the department, read up more about the department. So that'll be the education. Let me pause here. If there are any questions, let me know. Oh, okay. Doc. Uh, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, so with respect to the education, mm -hmm. we see that in University of Ghana, you indicated the program that you read and the certificate that you acquired. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the um, Secondary school, you didn't uh, the certificate that you acquired. For mm -hmm. instance, saying you got a, a o OAC certificate or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Is there any something like that there? Yeah, I think that's a very good. That's a that's a very good. I mean, question. Now I kind of struggle with it myself when um I was putting the CV together. Ideally. It should follow the same order, like what I did here, the program, the graduation class. Now, let me speak about the, the graduation class. First of all, there's nothing like graduation class in um, in high school that is universally accepted, right? So you cannot go like I got eight A's or I got four A's, three B's, one C. That would be very hard for someone to comprehend. So I, I am of the view that, hey, maybe that might not necessarily be relevant. So just take away the graduation class and replace it with the relevant courses that you took um, during your stay in, in, in the high school. Now, I think I might have repeated this guy here. That might have been an, an error. So when we go back to our technical discussion today, please remind me. I need to take that one out of it. Does that answer your question? And the certification okay. as well, I think business studies should just be okay. Maybe business studies, okay. maybe general arts, science, I mean, pure sciences, you can just put it there. Okay, okay. Yeah. thank you very much. Sure. Questions? Questions? And for the last time, questions? Good. So there are no more questions on the education side. After education comes your skill set. I think this is going to be very important. And your skill set, you might want to segment it into three or maybe perhaps just two. Software and then the languages that you speak. Software, the languages, and your personal soft skills that you think might be relevant for the program, right? So with the software, if you have been, if you have been to be in the pure sciences and you don't know LaTeX, I think that was, that's going to be, that might hurt you because... Um, for us in the in 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 the math and statistics side as well as the pure sciences we mostly write our documents with um, equation based stuff right so there is more mathy in a way so later can help you format your document in that in that in that way and it's more readable it handles math equation very 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 i mean cleanly Word can do it, but what I've seen is most of us go with the LaTeX. So if you are in um, in the sciences, as I mentioned earlier, the math related, statistics related, you should make it a point to learn LaTeX a bit and put it on your CV. Then again, the idea of Python is very important because you have to program. You have to write your, I mean, programming stuff uh, to run your models and whatnot. So if you know Python, you put it there upfront. Word, you can put it there. 
So these are some of the, I mean, skills, I mean, software skills that you need to put when you are designing a CV. So if you are to go to my website and you, you get to see my CV, I kind of, I mean, segment my software skills into two. The very first one, which is the programming, another aspect of it, which is the deployment. So you can also play around it. Think about the software skills that you possess. See how you can put it on a CV that can speak to your skill set. Then the languages. Languages is very important. They even ask you to, I mean, whether you speak English or not, right? So this is the case where you can make it known to them that in, indeed English is a first language. You speak English, right? So you, you just mentioned. It might be the case that you also speak other international languages as well, maybe French, maybe Chinese, maybe, I mean, Arabic. You can just put it there for them to see. It might, um, other, other sub-Saharan African languages, like in our case, the trees, the houses, the um, Kotokolis, the Gonjes, Ashant, uh, what's the name, Fantis, you can just put it there if, if, if you think um, you can speak them. Then comes the soft, I mean, the personal soft skills that um, I spoke about, the team player, I'm this, I'm that. You can just put it there if you want to, but maybe it's not, it might not necessarily be, I mean, relevant. So that's how to play around with the skills and then the languages. So let me pause here. If you have questions, let me know. Yeah, so with the skills, especially the software skills, mm. I read agriculture in KNUST and then, mm. so I'm planning on applying to UBC for an MSc in plant sciences. But then on the school's website, I've not seen anything with regards to the need for Python and then all of those other research-based softwares. Do you think it's still advisable I go ahead to learn it? Although at the moment I'm taking a data analytics uh, program, although I haven't started data analytics proper, we are at the foundation stage. Yeah, I think this is this is an important question. Now, you go into the website is more general, and the website will not speak well to what you are expected to see. So my advice will be if you go to the website and they, they don't mention it, it's for a reason, because they want to be as precise as possible. The next step is to go to the courses that has been taught. Go to the course outline. If you go to the course outline, they will specifically mention which software skills is needed. Right, so that's very important. Or the professor who is teaching that particular program, there's gonna be a mention of a software skill, be it Python, be it MATLAB, be it SPSS, data, whatever. They will mention it somewhere there. Okay, so the, the general, yeah, yeah. yeah, the general website will not do justice to it. Just go to the, I mean, course outlines, um, the specific uh, professor, who is teaching the, the program get to see his course outline. I think that, that would do some justice today to the question. No, yeah, I'll... so, um, oh, sorry for cutting you. No so in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the coming week, there's actually going to be a, a graduate school session mm -hmm. by UBC for those of our who are interested in applying. They're going to take us through most of the things that we need to know. Mm -hmm. I think one of the questions I would ask during that session would be, exactly um, what you've asked, mm -hmm. making reference to the MSc program in plant sciences and then find out what um, research skills are prioritized by mm -hmm. the department. Sure. Thank you. Sure, sure. Thanks. Um, and I think someone also raised their hand. Was it Falila? Um, was that a case? Hello? <laughs> Hello, Dr. Fanny. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm asking if there are any software. I think we can. We uh, that's a big. The there there was a break in your line, so I couldn't hear you. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah, go ahead. I'm asking if there are any software skills. For those of us in the social sciences. Yeah, I think STATA is going to be very important. STATA, SPSS, STATA, very, very important. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. Okay. Also go to the website and look at the course outlines I mentioned earlier. But STATA should be, yeah. should be there. Okay, um, any other question or questions before we move on? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, thank you. 
you're welcome you're welcome good um yeah so the next aspect of today's discussion will have let's look at the research experience so after i mean telling them the I type of skills go ahead you can hear me yeah i can i can yeah so i am also from the social sciences but then in creating my tv um i i use latex mm. so as a social scientist is it advisable that i added as part of my software for sure. Yeah, for sure for sure yeah if you know latex put it on it's always good to put more if if you have um an understanding of it I strongly, I strongly recommend okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so our next, uh, the next section here will speak about your research experience. So here as an undergrad, it might be the case that you don't you didn't necessarily, I mean, publish or maybe do a research based um, study, but you might have come across maybe a 10 paper that you wrote you can you can you can um, leverage such documents as part of your research experience. So a term paper, for instance, might might qualify for maybe your research experience. And how do you go about that? So you basic first of all mention the department under which this uh, research you undertook this research. Um, the name of the school for sure, the location, and then the year. So as I mentioned, these these are pretty much standard. You let them know that this is what went on in like the location, whatever. Then the topic. So you might be interested in studying the effect of this on that. So just state the topic very brief. Now, maybe what is the objective of that particular study? You can just mention it as brief as you can. Then what method did you implement? Is it a regression-based model? Is it a um, um, focus group? Is it like you're going to get a primary data from somewhere? You can just mention that as brief as you can, right? Then with the result, you can summarize your results in a line or two. Just tell them this was the finding. Something very brief as well. Then the name of the supervisor that you happen to work with or the advisor. So you can just let them, I mean, understand. Here you can see I'm adding a click, I mean a link to it. So when the person is to click on this link, he, he or she will understand who this particular professor happens to be and um, what was studied. Yeah, so that's gonna be your research experience. So if you are to have in, if you are to have more than one research experience, you can add another one. I mean, the same format, something brief, and go ahead with it. So let me pause here. So this is gonna be our research aspect. If you have any question, please let me know. Question or questions? Yeah. Hello. Mm -hmm. Uh, please, I would like to know, should the research paper that you had written, is it conditional that it must have been published? No, 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 no. Okay. This is a 10 paper. Yeah, this is going to be just a 10 paper. If you have a 10 paper, just put it there. Okay. okay. Yeah, sure. Then we go on to the next one, right? So here we might be, any question? Anyone with a question in there? Yes, please. Yeah, go ahead. Um, please ask me. Mm -hmm. to the research experience. Mm -hmm. Are we supposed to stick to our thesis that we wrote, or we do being uh, research assistants in our schools? Can we add some of the research that we have participated in? That's a very good question. That's a very good question. I think I'll come to that section as well. So I, I deliberately separated the two sections. So I'll, I'll speak okay. to that. Yeah, I'll speak okay. to that. Uh, any additional question in there? Okay. So I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, please, with regards to the method, mm -hmm. um, you talk about uh, the fact that we can add a final year project, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So with regards to the method, um, for it, I mean, final year doing electrical engineering, mm -hmm. and we are working on a design project. So I don't know what. I will be required to put at the method session. Also, uh, I yeah, I think this 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 might be a tough question for me because I don't necessarily know what's in, I mean involved within the I mean electrical engineering side. But if, for instance, you had to perhaps use a specific approach to solving the problem, 
right? So maybe it's it was more along the lines of you guys going to the lab, um, conducting an experiment to understand the effects of something on something, then that the method here will be more along the lines of the experimental lab method that you guys, I mean, used. There might be other related approaches that were adopted. You can mention those as well. But that would be a fair idea of how to think about the methods here. Okay, thank you. Sure, sure. And those in the in the sciences, I think your CV will be somewhat different. I think um, Professor Solomon sp I mean, spoke about that some time ago. Um, you can watch the section on my C on my um, website. Um, get to see what Professor Solomon um, I mean suggested. Hopefully, that can be of help as well. But I think being here and understanding what we are doing will give you an additional plus because you can navigate through what Prof Solomon said, what we are currently discussing, and also implementing everything in LaTeX as uh, I strongly recommend. Okay, good. Now, teaching assistantship, very important if you have any teaching role. Um, so this is how to go about your teaching assistantship as well. Be very specific. Again, with everything you might have realized, I always start with the department, the school, the location, and then the year. Right now, um, if you are to teach a course, I always recommend you put the course code there. So, for instance, you might say I taught intermediate microeconomics, but someone would think of this as a level hundred course. But it might not necessarily be a level hundred course. It might be a three hundred level course or a four hundred level course, which is a which is a higher course in some respect. You are dealing with um, pretty much matured undergrad students. You, you are more, I mean, involved. The questions are more, I mean, they are, they are very difficult. You tend to deal with difficult situations. So adding the course code is gonna be very, very relevant to your story, right? So if you have to teach a course, mention the name of the course for sure, as I indicated here, but also make it a point to let them understand that this is a higher level course, maybe a 300 level course. 400 level course. If, if it's a 100 level course, for sure do that. It doesn't really hurt, but the course code can help uh, tell, tell, tell a story here. So this is how to go about it as well in terms of formulating your teaching assistantship role. Now, let me pause here. Let me know if you have any questions or questions. Those of us who don't have teaching assistantship role, I want to believe we are not supposed to enter anything here. Yeah, yeah, you just take it off. Yeah. You might have some, uh, what's the name, some pluses in terms of your role in the industry or your work uh, experience, which a teaching assistant might not necessarily have, right? So these are the pros and cons. A teaching assistant, a teaching assistant might have this, you wouldn't, but you might have a more, a richer work experience and he wouldn't have a, that's uh, much of a work experience when it comes to the work experience side. Any question or questions? Okay, good. Seems like you're making um, some progress. And I'll cut back to what Rashid mentioned. So here, Rashid, I think your earlier question is, how do we differentiate between your own personal work as, as a researcher compared to you working as a research assistant? So this is, uh, where your research assistantship I mean, comes in. So here, if you are to assist a professor, um, do something, you assist her with data collection, I mean, experiment coordinator. So currently I'm running an experiment. I go in touch with uh, you guys on the group. I mean, asking if someone is interested in, I mean, coordinating any of the experiments and for sure I was going to pay for sure. And some of you go in touch. So I, I kind of shortlisted you guys to join. So if you happen to be part of my experiment coordinators, you can for sure write this on your CV and I'm happy to provide reference. And I'm also happy to, I mean, write the summary of the results. You can put it on this, uh, your CV. You can attach my name to it and I can, I mean, explain the role that you played with regards to um, the experiment that we coordinated. So uh, I think there are six undergrads that go in touch with me and currently we are running the experiment together. You guys will have this as an aspect to your CV. 
So please have this in mind. If you happen to have uh, any research assistantship in your department as well, you can add more to it. Now, again, here is the same approach, like the topic, what was the objective, what was the method, what was the result? So from here, I will give you everything that you expected to, I mean, put here. Then the role, you can just click my name here, then it will go straight to the website. And I think we can equally change. I mean, they can equally come to our experiment page where we have our experiment group, where we publish our results. I think the very first experiment that we ran was we, the coordinators happened to be Dali Love and Mohammed Ghazali. Currently, we have um, Araba, Zulfawu, um, Hafsa, uh, let me see, Rashid. Uh, who again? Yeah, I think we have six, six or so. Sorry, I might have forgotten. So this is how um, that aspect of your CV can come in to help. So yeah, if you happen to be a teaching assistant, put it here. But if you happen to be a research assistant where the role wasn't the primary role of yours, but you assisted with something, you can put it under the research and experimental lab assistantship. And you just have to make sure that you let them know what your role happens to be. You're not the lead researcher for, you know, you're not. You're just basically trying to collect the data, coordinate the experiment, run the lab. Yeah, so that's how to go about it. So that would be the um, research and experimental lab assistantship side. If you have any question on that, please let me know before I move on to the next one. Mm -hmm. So with, um, with your experimental um, research that you, you talked about, how about those that you don't even know about that you, that you, that you want to tell, how do you go about it? I don't, I don't, I, I don't, sorry, I didn't get that. Your line was a bit faint. Can you hear me? Yeah, can you speak up a bit? Thanks. Yeah. All right, so I am asking that how do we, how do we join your experimental research? Oh, so currently, um, yeah, I think I go in touch on the page I asked and uh, those who go in touch earlier, I was able to, I mean, get them in. So currently we have the, uh, the experiment ongoing. There's one coming, I mean, up and coming one. I'm not sure whether I need more. If I'm to, I mean, if I need more, I'll let you guys know. The issue on my side with more experiment coordinators, it will have to do with the cost because I have to pay you guys. The more I recruit, the more I have to pay. Currently, six will be enough for me because I can I can manage with, with six and pay, pay everyone with that. But if I'm to get like 10 people in, then I need to pay 10 people. Maybe my pocket will not be. <laughs> I don't have that, such such a deep pocket, but if it's something that anyone is interested in, I mean, getting to know, I mean, join the, I mean, the coordinators, I mean, observe the meetings. We, I mean, I don't think that should be a major concern. Let me talk to the senior members like Daddy Love and Gazali to see whether um, we can get in more people. If they think that's a good idea, I will just let you guys know. I'll communicate it on the page. Okay, all right, thank you. Sure, sure. Yeah, so that would be the research assistant. Yes, I have a question. Go ahead, go ahead. So, uh, please, some of us who are TAs in our department and uh, we are not really considered or classified as research assistant, but we assist our lecturers to um, conduct their research and write their own articles for publication. So um, I do not know how to put that on my CV because they'll ask you to go and read on this particular article for me and then mm. get the results. We are not really doing a specific uh, experimental work or laboratory work, but we are, being, we are giving an assignment in the form of reading an article, getting a data. So I'm mm. thinking of how I'm going to put that on the CV. So that's a very good question. So here you are basically doing literature review for them. So your role will be along the lines of literature review and maybe sometime maybe data collection if, if required. So talk to them. Tell them that, hey, and I'm very sure of the fact that you're working with them implies that they, they are more in the position to provide you references. So if you have that very good rapport with them, you can let them know that, hey, I'm, I'm drafting my CV and I just want to put you on as uh, uh, as part of my role, what I what I assisted you with. Do you mind, I mean, having a look at it? Is it something that you you can agree with? I'm very sure they will, they, they will agree. And also, you also come here and tell 
uh, everyone looking at your CV that this is someone who is providing you reference. Okay, so here as well, if you're working with a professor as more or less like a quasar role of a res uh, research assistant or someone trying to collect the data, I think uh, you can put the person's name here as part of your uh, referees or supervisor. So talk to them. I'm very sure they, they should be open. So here in the West, most researchers are open about the idea because they are also trying to push you out there as um, as their students, right? So they are more comfortable, I mean, doing this. So talk to, I don't know about Ghana for sure, but I'm very sure that it should be the same with um, with academia. They should, they, should, they should be in a position to do that. And with my um, coordinators, I, I think, as I mentioned earlier, I told them that, hey, this is something I'm willing to do for you guys. So they can do that. Maybe if in your case, you probably might want, might want to talk to your professor first before putting it on. Thank you very much. Sure. Now, oh, then... Okay. No. Yeah, go ahead. Um, please, uh, with regards to the uh, research experience here mm. and mental lab assistantship, mm. is it advisable for us to just indicate the topic and uh, possibly the role that you played in the research mm -hmm. without uh, bringing the objective methodology use and results. That's a good, that's a, that's a good that question. Good concept. Yeah, you can, you can, you can take away all those sides. Yeah, you can take <laughs> away the objective, the method and the results. Just put some, yeah, if, yeah, I think that should be, that should be okay. That should be okay. Okay. And also, Doc, uh, mm. if as an undergrad student, you, you have, you already, where do you indicate the publication? Yeah, I think you should you should have publication part. Um, maybe that should be part here, the research experience, right? So here you can you can add another aspect to it, whether it's published or not. So you can write publish this particular site. But if you are if you are to go to a more advanced CV, they write the abstract and write where it was published. Yeah, so that that could be done as well. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, so after this side comes your awards and your scholarships, right? So one thing that you guys should have in mind, what I've been saying all this while, you don't see anything related to your work. And that's very important. You don't see anything to related to your work. Your work will be somewhere down there. This is an academic CV. So everything that comes, um, Everything that you bring uh, in front is mostly along the lines of your academic experience. Then your work experience will come down there. So you, yeah, um, Alassan, go ahead. If you have any question, please go ahead. Happy to take it. Alassan, you have a question? And for the last time, Alassan, is a career. Do you have a question? Okay, then I will just go ahead and uh, discuss the the awards section. So with the awards, you mentioned the award that you have, but here you probably might wanna be a bit more careful as well because there are two types to, a, to an award. There might be an award that's, I mean, awarded to you based on your academic um, excellence, like you did very well in school. So they are, I mean, presenting this particular award to you. That's academic based and it's merit based as well. There is the other type of award that's more along the lines of a bursary. So you are given a bursary because you are in a financial difficulty, they are, they are giving you that particular award because uh, you are facing these challenges. So it will hopefully help you um, alleviate some of the challenges that you are faced with. So that will be not along the lines of merit-based, uh, more along the lines of the fact that you are struggling. So just make it known to them that the award that I got is a merit-based. So here you define or you give a brief description of what the award is about. If it's not a merit-based, you also provide the description why you were awarded that particular scholarship or that particular award. So keep that in mind. If there are any questions on the award side, let me know. If there are no questions, uh, we can quickly go on to the next one. Good. Then the conferences, the workshops that you presented, your role. So if you are to if you are to oh, attend, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. I didn't check up the unmute session before I spoke. So sorry for that. Mm. Um, mine basically is in my current field of work. I'm mm. a teacher, mm. so the award 
this is uh, strictly academics, meaning that there are certain awards that have achieved, which is merit. That wouldn't come in there, right? You can you can put everything there, but just make sure you define like you let them know why you were awarded, right? All right. Yeah. All right. Just let so them you can, know. You can, you can attach, attach the, the award. Yeah. Can you attach that to me? You attach the link to the award, you mean? Yeah, you can do that. You can attach the link to the award to, to your CV. I think when you come here, I try also attaching a link to the award that I have. I don't know whether this link will open, but that's, that's basically what your question is about, right? So when you just go here, you should be able to see that. Yeah, you can attach the link to it. Um, Zulfa, um, Zulfa, do you have any question? Please go ahead. Yes, please, I have a question. So my question is, um, what if you win an award from your department, I mean, your academics department, but the award is not based on academics. It's like an entrepreneurship award. Mm -hmm. Do you bring it there? Yeah, you do. You yeah, do. You do. You do. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, Thank explain. you. Explain. Yeah. yeah. Good. Um. Yeah, I think that should be it on the award side. Go ahead. Um. Um. So in a way, they considered your academic performance. And because of the fact that you were needy, they gave you that scholarship. Is it merit-based? I think it should be merit-based because the very first part of it says brilliant, right? It says okay. brilliant, right? So it's merit-based, yeah. All right. And also with regards to the links that we can attach in our CVs, mm. can you um, just upload, let's say for a scholarship, let's say I have a scholarship and I, I, I want to attach a link that will send them to a proof of the scholarship. Can I just upload the, let's say the scholarship letter on Google Drive and then attach the Google link, the Google yes. Drive link? If you're comfortable with it, right? So if you're comfortable with it, because some scholarships comes with um, details, like this particular student had this particular grade and because of that, we are awarding this, blah, blah, blah. She's winning this amount. So if these, if, uh, with these details, if you're comfortable sharing them, you can put it on your Google Drive and share it with people. But if you're not comfortable, then you probably might not want to do that. You might just want to send them to a general description page of the awards. And uh, hopefully they can... Um, that, that, that particular page will, will entail some of the students that um, got it in the past and your name might be there. So that should be enough proof. Hey, mama, hey. Please. Um, hey, mama, hey. Please, for all the links that you have shown so far, they take the they lead to websites. Mm. So okay. if I want to no. use if I don't want to create a website, let's say I don't know how to create a website, can I just upload the related documents to go down the link, attach the links? Mm -hmm. All right. I just wanted to know if that's allowed. Yeah, it should be. So here, when you go to my um, my teaching evaluation, I believe this should be on a Google Drive, right? So you can see this is on a Google Drive, right? All right. Yeah, so it's not. Yeah. Benis, do you have a question? <laughs> yeah, yeah, go ahead. I'm the... yeah. Oh, sure. Go ahead. She's my friend. I didn't get to. Okay. My name is. Oh, uh, okay. So I guess that should be enough for that side. Good. Then, um, your work experience, right? Zufal, do you have a question? Or I believe we've you already asked, or do you have any follow-up questions to that? No, please. Like, okay. it's from the first one. Okay. Yeah. Now, let's uh, quickly go ahead and discuss your work experience. So here, you should have your work experience here. Those who have any related work experiences, you can just put it here. Define what your role is, the, the company name for sure, where the company is located, the year. And uh, just go, go ahead. And, please, um, can you guys mute? I would appreciate that a lot. Halima, can you, yeah. So that's what um, we can do, right? So that's a work experience. 
Um, lastly, I think we are just about um, 55 minutes in. This should be just about enough for now. Your volunteer activity, activity. what's your role? What's happens your to role? Happens to be? <laughs> Yeah, what your role happens to be, they just so uh, by now you guys might have gotten the the feel of how a CV will be. So I wouldn't take much time here. Volunteering is very important because it tends to tell how um the your human your humanitarian side of things, especially those in the social sciences, the psychologists, the political sciences. If you are doing such works, you are always working with people. So you have to engage the community. So if you're doing social work and you don't have any volunteering activity to show for, I mean, for it, maybe that would not be a good thing. You might want to show people that, hey, I'm really practicing what I'm learning in school. I'm doing social work. I'm engaged in kids. I'm helping my community. I'm doing this. So this is where you put in your volunteering activities. And the West, um, here in the West, they really take, I mean, such things very serious. Um, they look at uh, your activities outside of school. I mean, how do you help people? Yeah, especially when you're looking for a job. They're always looking for a volunteering experience. Yeah, so, and um, lastly, for the supervisors and your referees, you can put their details here. So this, in the case, in my case, you can um, basically uh, write it here. So those in my experiment group, as I mentioned to you guys, I can serve as your referee. So you can make it a point to add my details here. Um, hopefully I can um, send you the recommendation letters uh, after our experiment. And again, we have to understand what you are doing in the experiment first, see how we coordinate. Now, Bismarck, please go ahead and ask your question and um, we can go to the technical side of things. Bismarck, go ahead. For the last time, Bismarck, are you are you asking a question? Well, people add volunteership and yeah, please. Sorry, I can't hear you. Yeah. Hello, please. Your line is uh, we can we can't hear you. Ben is go ahead and um, hopefully he can come in. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah go, go ahead. ahead. I think your line is uh, it's a bit unstable. Um, maybe we can take Benis. Benis, go ahead. I think your line, your line is also faint, um, Benis. So far, if you have a question, go ahead. Okay, so um, from your CV, I didn't see anywhere um there was a leadership role. Can it come under volunteer or extra curricular activity? Yeah, this is where yeah, you this is it. where you put it. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. what and what if you are an entrepreneur? Oh, like you have oh. a business to run. So here you can put so in here you can put work in work as well. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Sure. Um, Bismarck, um, go ahead. Bismarck, go ahead. Bismarck, go ahead. And for the last time, Bismarck, go ahead. Now, um, if Bismarck is not here, Benis, go ahead. Please, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so, if, in case you had, um, if you had some online courses or some short courses, it, it could be online or in person. Yeah. For instance, last last semester, I had a course. There was um an industrial training program. Yeah. Where do I, where do I put it on my CV? I think you can. I think I put it under education. Okay. Yes, it, yeah. 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 Um, uh, and second, sure. yeah. Secondly, right. I I have a CV, um, which is which is in a similar format, mm. and but from what I'm seeing here, I'll have to make some changes, mm. some of the sections. Mm. So, do I have to necessarily? Go go learn LaTeX uh, and then start the whole thing again. Um, not necessarily. I think that's where I'm just taking you guys to. Um, giving I'm just gonna give you guys a short tutorial on LaTeX. 
because everything that you see here will be in LaTeX that I, I crafted. So you just have to have a look at it, change whatever you see here to suit your own style, and that should be it. It should be that easy. So that's the that's the aim of today's discussion. I take you guys through the CV, get to see um, what I did, get to see what you guys might want to change. Then I will take you guys to the actual file, tell you where to find what, and if there's a need for you to delete anything, you can delete it right away. Is that okay? Yes, please. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, any question or questions? Um, Halima, go ahead. Hello, thank you. Sorry for the noise earlier. Mm. Please, I want to ask, yes, some of us, we completed school a very long time now, like mm. almost 10 years or more than that. Mm -hmm. And getting connected to our supervisors is a bit challenging because I tried, I've been trying for the past four years, trying to get a master program to like to pursue, but getting my supervisors is a bit difficult for me, even though I've tried, but then they, are, they, they still want, they, they prefer responding to the current uh, students, mm. if I may say, but they don't give you that much attention. Mm. So now I'm an entrepreneur and also, I mean, the, uh, I've learned a lot of stuff, which I want to cons cons consider in my master's uh, program, mm. like the sustainable sustainability, anything that has to do with environment mm. and waste management and also the hospitality. Any, any that I can get, I want to channel into that. So I want to know, it, you know, my CV will definitely be different because I wouldn't get all these things down. And some of them, so I wouldn't remember, even though I took, I took part in some of uh, activities on campus. Okay, I want to know whether my current employers or whoever I've done a training under can equally be my uh, supervisor or maybe someone I can use to use as a recommender. Because some of the, school, the schools, they will recommend you to bring, uh, your recommendation should be an electra. You get it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how current I can adjust, I can adjust myself to suit any masters because I've been having challenges a lot. Mm -hmm. so that's a difficult yes, one. Um, I think with, 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 I mean, referees, they, they can, some of the schools specifically mentioned, as you um, indicated, that you should have maybe two academic referees and one, uh, Two academic referees and um, sorry, yeah, two academic referees and one, yeah, sorry guys, let me let me just mute this. Yeah, two academic referees and one um, from industry. Um, yeah, I think that was a tough one for me. I I don't know. Yeah, I'm trying to think on top of my head what might be the best approach, but unfortunately, nothing. I I. I'm finding it difficult to think about the best approach here. You know what? I think we can we can um, connect offline. Hopefully, if something comes to mind, I'll let you know. Um, the challenges in Ghana is very different from here. Here, here they are very much open. Ghana might be somewhat different. And from what you just mentioned, this seems to be a very um, difficult situation. Um, yeah, I think let's connect offline. If, if something comes to mind, I, I can surely suggest it. All right, sure. Thank you very much. Sure. Um, Kenneth, go ahead. I'll take one more question, then I'll take you guys to the technical side because we've already spent an hour. All right, thanks for the opportunity. Um, my question has to do with the extracurricular activities and the volunteership. Yeah. I'm a geological engineer, but I really love music and I love um sports. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to this field, I have a lot of experience with the um when it comes to the um, extracurricular activities. It has to do with sports and music, which mm. is not connected to my program of study. Mm. Is this still relevant to bring it here? I think here yeah, this is more along the lines of a hobby instead of extracurricular activity. Um, okay, I so I'm saying this because yeah. with the volunteership, even back in the university, mm. I was still uh, volunteering to support uh GHS students with sporting activities, yeah, teaching yeah. them music. Yeah, yeah, stuff. yeah. That that should be that should be part of your volunteering activity. You didn't mention that if this is the case that you are doing for your personal, I mean, stuff, then that wouldn't be volunteering. But here you are training no. others, right? So this is yeah. this is considered uh extracurricular or volunteering. Yeah. So there should be there should okay. be that that um distinction between what one considers as a hobby and one what one considered 
um, consider, considers as um, volunteership. Volunteering is more along the lines of helping others. And that's what you just mentioned right now. Those playing soccer just for their own benefit, that wouldn't be considered as so, yeah. Good. Uh, okay. Sure, Kenneth. Um, then um, okay, I so think. Sorry to cut in, please. Yeah. Okay, so please, can you put some of your hobbies that you also feel they might be relevant on your CV? Um, no, I don't think I I I don't consider hobbies as as a strong, uh, like someone's marriage status, or someone's age, or. Uh, movies you're interested in these are not so considered academic stuff your hobby i i i kind of stay away from it i don't i don't i don't recommend yeah. all right good well, now let's quickly know, yeah go ahead sorry please uh, is it also advisable for you to indicate your research interest areas i think some do yeah some do if 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 this is something you might want to yeah you can yeah okay. good um let's quickly go to the latex so here this is how the latex is going to be um so this is what we have here so first thing first make it a point to create a latex account so you go to overleave create overleave using google and put um, i mean put it somewhere safe then these are going to be the files. The very first file is going to be the resume.tech. So I'll share this file with you, but you just have to understand how this file works. So the very first file here is going to be the resume.tech. So when you create your um, Overleave account, I mean, create it with Google, you open the very first um, file. We just create on this car and it's a new file. You, you click it, you create the resume, the tech that is, we just mentioned here, and you just create um click on create and that will create it for you. When you do that, then I'm going to upload this resume the tech file. You basically come in there and copy everything here. You copy everything here and put it there. So you create your resume the tech file, which is empty. You then go to my resume.tech file, which contains these details, and you put it straight into your resume.tech account, which happens to be, I mean, empty. Now you have everything um, signed in. And then you need to understand how this resume.tech file is. I think I try, I mean, explaining. So the section one of it, you don't necessarily have to touch it, leave it. Um, you come to section two, this is where you have your personal details. So here you just have to be a bit more careful. So if your name is not Farouk, you probably might wanna change Farouk here to suit your first name, very, very important. And also you have to take away this link because um, you, you, you might not necessarily have a website. So you have to take away the link. If you have a LinkedIn account, you can replace this link with the LinkedIn account link here. So here you can see that I've provided my LinkedIn account. So you can go ahead and replace this link with your own LinkedIn account. You can do the same thing here. You replace this link here with your LinkedIn account. Okay, very simple. You only change two things here, your name and then the link. You change your surname and then the link. You don't touch, here, this is where you guys ask the question. I said, if I'm not having a PhD, I'm just an undergrad, what should I do? This is section 2.2, .2, which contains the PhD, uh, the PhD that I mentioned earlier, which we just started discussing, this side of things, this guy here. If you don't have a PhD and you don't want to bring it there, you just comment on it. To comment, you just click on this percentage sign. If you uh, right percentage sign in front of any code in LaTeX, it will kill that particular, I mean, link for uh, link or description for you. So you just put the percentage sign in front of it and you don't see it anymore. So that's a difference between my CV and your CV. You wouldn't have the PhD economics data science uh, position. I will have it. And to account for this difference, you have to 
attach the percentage sign in front of it. I hope um, this is clear. Then comes the address. Again, with the address, if you come to my address, this is what you realize. I uh, realize that my, uh, this is the address I have here. You might want to change it to suit your address and I have a link attached to it as well. So if your address is different, um, please change your address, which is this guy here. And this, the, anytime you see HTTP, it means it's a link. You might want to kill the link by just deleting it entirely. Just delete it like this and then your link is off. So that's what you need to do. You change the address here. You also make sure the link needs to be changed. So keep this in mind. You don't want a, a situation where your link is uh, different or your link is to someone's uh, description and your description is different. So be careful. Be careful about the links. Then comes the email address. So this is my email address. You might want to change your email address to suit your CV. Then comes the contact detail. You might want to change the contact detail again to suit you. If you don't have a website, just like what a colleague of yours mentioned earlier, you can quickly um, in, come in here and um, put the dollar sign in front of it. So that means you don't have any Google Sites account. So it's not going to appear. If you have it, you activate it, okay? Then with, with the citizenship, I think I mentioned earlier what motivated um, that the Zoom account for sure. Then the citizenship, this is where you can put in your citizenship if there's a need for it. But in your case, I don't think anyone will need the idea of citizenship. So you might just want to kill the, uh, the link here by putting in the dollar sign here. Oh, sorry, the percentage sign, I mean. So this is how it works in terms of the header. So by doing what I just mentioned right now, you will be in a position to uh, you'll be in a position to edit everything from this citizenship up here. So that's a technical detail I'm trying to I mean, let you guys understand. We now understand the CV. We now understand how to format the header to suit our own taste. So an example here. Imagine the situation where one of my lab coordinators, let me take Zulfao for instance, um, she's interested in using this um, CV to suit her, um, her profile. So here, instead of saying um, Farouk, she would just change it to Zulfao. But at the same time, being mindful that this link needs to go away. So she would, change, she would take away this link. Very, very important. And maybe her surname, maybe, I don't know the surname, but maybe Mohammed might be a safe one. So let's do this. So now, as soon as I do this, I'll click on this recompile file. And you can clearly see that the name has been changed from Farouk Abdussalam to Zulfao Mohammed. But the issue here is the link is still active. The link takes you directly to my page. So please, I warn again, make sure you take away the link when you are using the, the file I'm going, to, I'm going to send. Unless, of course, you have your own website. If you don't, take away this. If you have a LinkedIn profile, you can change it and put in a LinkedIn profile there. So that would be my first point here. Now, if you have any question on this technical detail, let me know. If not, then I can go to the second part of it. Questions? Good. Um, the next part of it is um, we quickly go to uh, the what you see at the bottom of the CV. So the, what you see at the bottom of the CV, let me take you guys back to the CV as well is this guy here basically giving a brief description that this is Farouk Abdul Salam CV. So you might want to change it to say maybe Rashid Adam CV. So again, if you want to do that, if you want to effect that change, you just come here and make sure you change it. But again, be mindful that when there's any link attached to it, you kill the link. So here, instead of it being Farouk Abdul Salam, you change it to your name or whatever that you think will be suitable. That would be the first part. The header, the, the footer, we are done. Now it's time to attack the various sections. 
in your um, resume dot, uh, dot text CV, these are the sections. So when you count the number of sections that we have here, I believe we should have like 10 sections. The very first section being the profile, the education, the skill set up until the uh, supervisor and uh, referees. So we have 10 separate sections. So here, that's what you see here. So we have the resume, the summary section, which is the, pro the profile part. We have the section one, which is education. We have the skill set. We have the research experience. We have the teaching experience. So these are the sections. So you put them along those lines. And that's what I've done here. So you don't necessarily have to do anything here. If, for instance, you don't have a, a teaching experience like your colleague mentioned earlier, then what you do here is when you come to the teaching experience where you don't have a teaching experience, you just comment and put in the dollar sign here. So it, that will make sure that the teaching experience does not come at all. If you have a teaching experience, the percentage sign will be taken off. If you want to move to the next page, you can do the, I mean, new page, but I don't think we need a new page now. The new page basically says that you are trying to format it properly. So you are moving to the next page. So that's what you have to keep in mind. So this is going to be the main doc that is going to take in how you segment your, your CV. An example here, if for instance, you don't follow the steps and you ended up uh, maybe putting in this skill set ahead of for instance, if you cancel, if you take away the skill set and uh, you bring it ahead of education and you recompile, this is what you see. So you see, I've changed the format now. I've now changed the format from uh, education to skill set and languages to skill set and languages and education. So be mindful. The chronology is very, very important. The, the detail here is going to be very important. So keep in mind that everything that I did here, and I've been very careful here to label each and every section. Uh, so, uh, so the skill set is 3.2.2, .2, and then the education is 3.2.1. That is to say, education is first, then counts the skill set. Let me know if I have any question on that. So you do that till the very last end and you are safe. Then there's gonna be this awesome um, cv.cls. This is gonna be an important file as well. I'm gonna send that one to, please don't touch this file. This is a no, no, it no goes as one area. If you are new to LaTeX, don't touch this file. The awesome, .um, the, the awesome CV, don't touch it at all is more, more along the lines of the engine. Okay, so please don't touch it. Now let's start by looking at um, education. Then you also create a different folder. So when you come to LaTeX, so now we are done with understanding what resume.tech is. We are done with understanding what awesome CV CLS, which I, I, I clearly mentioned that no one should touch it. We now understand these two files. The next step is for you, to come and create two separate folders. So this icon you see here, which says resume, is gonna be a folder. So to create a folder, you just go here, click on the new folder. When you click on the new folder, you just name it as resume and that's it. And you click create and that will create the resume for you. Okay, very, very simple. You, uh, as soon as you create this folder, Within the folder comes the most salient point. So for instance, in the folder, we had a session that has to do with summary. And the summary is basically the very first thing that we saw here, which is like your profile, which is this guy here. So you go to summary and that's what you see here. As soon as you open summary, and again, I'm gonna send you guys this file. When you create your folder, within that particular folder, you create a summary.tech file. It's gonna be empty. Open it, um, use the, uh, the summary.tech that I'm gonna provide you guys, and I'll just copy and paste it here. And that's just gonna be it. So that's what, whatever you see here is basically this summary or the profile that we see here, this profile part. 
Okay, so that's why we label this the section as profile. And this is just the description. So you can change it. You don't touch anything. The only thing you need to chat, you need to, I mean, change here is from here to here. Okay, the description. Also be mindful, don't make sure you leave one space here before you start from here. Just keep what I what I did and be safe. Then you come to the next section of it. Within the same resume um, folder, you create a new file, which I called section one education. You click on it, section one education. Here, it contains all the necessary details that you need to create. So here, for sure, you see the my education, the Bachelor of Arts, Investor of Ghana, the link. You just change them. What's if, for instance, you didn't go to Investor of Ghana, but you went to Investor of Development Studies, you just change this one to Investor of Development Studies. If your program is different from my the political science, you just write political science and change this one. So that's how to I mean play around with it. Don't don't touch the Kelly brackets. Oh, the backslashes, don't touch them. The only thing you need to change is get the CV that I provided you, see where the differences are, the writing, just change them. Then again, you come to the skill set section, which is section two. I clearly mentioned here, section two, right? So you come in here, again, the only thing you need to change is if you did, if you don't have MS Word, but you have Python, you just replace it with Python. This is how oh, it's going to be. So it's gonna be that simple. So you keep on creating your own subfolder. I'm sorry, your own sub files. Um, copy whatever I'm gonna provide, replace them there, carefully change them to suit your profile. And at the end of the day, you should have a LaTeX doc. It will take some learning, it's a, it's a learning curve, but if you are used to it after some, some iterations, it should be fine. Let me pause here. If you have any questions, let me know. Questions? Any question or questions? Okay. Is it clear from your end? If you guys are, if you guys are clear, then I think I'm good. Okay. Sounds good then. Um, I guess this should be just about it for today's discussion. It's my hope that um, whatever we discuss here. You guys will implement it and submit a very good looking CV as I try as much as possible to shortlist the final um, 20 students who qualify for the half application fee payment. So use these resources. CV is gonna be very important. If you present a CV that is messy, but you have a very good, I mean, great point. It goes to show that uh, maybe you, don't, you, don't necessarily, you didn't necessarily follow our session. And um, I rather give it to someone who spent time to join these sessions, did what uh, we think might be, I mean, relevant, uh, and um, I mean, provide the person the chance. So um, I think I can't teach, I can't reiterate that enough. I would rather give the monies to someone who has been following the sessions and taking everything as serious as, as he or she can, rather than give it to someone who has a good GPA but not necessarily following the session because my understanding has been that by just looking at the, the gps you don't get the full story um in the last in our last uh was the, in our last meeting we we shortlisted just basically based on the gpa and some just didn't show up and that's a loss for me because i, I, I devoted that money to help students so you coming in with a good gpa but not showing the right attitude is a no-no for me going forward so these are these are the steps that i'm taking in to help you guys use them use these resources if you are to encounter any challenge along the way in drafting your cv i can try as much as possible to help i don't think i necessarily have any one-on-one -on -one, uh, meeting on cvs anymore because we've gotten this session everyone is okay so far so one-on-one -on -one sessions on CVs might not necessarily be a good use of my time moving forward. If you didn't join the session and you just come and go like, hey, I wasn't here, but uh, can you help me review my CV or can you write, help me write my CV? I don't think that would be a good use of my time. There are about 300 or 400 of you guys on the page. Only 30 of you currently here. 
that's okay. Hopefully the rest can watch the, the video. But again, I cannot in, um, in on an individual level analyze 400 separate CVs. That wouldn't be a good use of my time. This is the only way that I can scale. By scaling, I mean I can uh, impact a lot of you at the same time rather than spending maybe 400 hours. I'm just spending an hour, 30 minutes providing the video, providing the resources, making sure everyone is okay. So please understand, if someone is to come to me and go like, hey, can you help me write a CV moving forward? Understand my position. If I'm to say no, it's for a reason because I, understand, uh, I totally believe that this session will be very useful and uh, I wouldn't want to use my time again individually going through each and every one CV. Unless, of course, if you have to, if you have to I mean, face a technical challenge, and that happens a lot with this LaTeX, if you are new to it, that I understand. So if, if you are part of today's session, you are facing any technical challenge, just get in touch with me. Hopefully, I can be of help. But if, the, if, in, if someone didn't join and Come in with a different story that hey, help me write a CV. Unfortunately, that, that wouldn't be a good use of my time. So I would like to pause here and uh, see whether I can take questions. I think Benis has a question. Benis, go ahead. Uh, after Benis, if anyone has any follow up questions, please feel free to do so. With the links, <laughs> for instance, the one attached to your name, <laughs> when you, if I want to, more um, change it and then put my name there. When I delete, if I delete the link, am I supposed to delete um, the curly brackets as well, or uh, just put it in the link? I think what, what is I think what is in the link should do. So I think when you, um, let me see. Yeah, I think what's what's in the link should do. You can decide to take away the curly bracket, but um, just uh, just just delete the, anything from the um, the href. Um, just anything from here should do. Yeah. Yeah, anything from here should do. Yes, please. I get yeah. it. Sure. Please. Yeah. Um, Benis, you have a question or Stan? Please go ahead. Yeah, hello, like that. Yeah. So with the, uh, like, let's say the volunteering, mm -hmm. assuming per the, the files that you sent to us for us mm -hmm. to copy into our own empty listing, it mm -hmm. has only space for two. And mm -hmm. I want to add another one, mm -hmm. maybe three. So how, how do I go about it? That's a good question. I think um, this is what you do. So everything from the C inventory implies you are starting a new one, right? So in your case, um, in my case, you see that I have just two C inventory. So this is first C inventory. Um, this is second C inventory. That means a second volunteering um, that's here, right? So if you want to add a third one, um, Stan, you just copy this guy here. You come down here. Again, you start from C inventory. You make sure these guys are here and you can go to like um, maybe Y or Z and you click on this, right? And as soon as you do that, um, Stan, you should be able to see the new addition. When you, add, when you add it, you click on um, recompile, and this is what we have here, right, Stan? Well, does that answer your question? Sure, all right, yeah. thank you. Yeah, sure, that's a good question. That's a, I think most of you will face this a lot. Like for instance, you have just one um, research experience, others have two research experiences. This is how you play around with it. You copy from the C inventory, from the first to the last, you, you maintain a space, you add it, you play around with it, that should, be, that should work out. Um, question, um, any follow-up questions on this? Yeah, Stan, you have a question too? Any question or questions? Okay, Anthony, go ahead. Go ahead, Anthony. Okay, so um, mine is kind of general. I'm not concerned about what you explain today. Uh -huh. So um, in case I applied for the... Um, application, the one they are going to support with mm -hmm. 50 um, Canadian mm -hmm. dollars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I applied to it before watching or having this session with you, let's say with different CV. Should I, would you advise for me to apply again 
with uh, maybe the CCNC, I'm talking about if you're not having a good CV. Oh, no, I think that's a very good question. So for now, I think um, the very first step is for us to get everyone in. Take everyone to the, I mean, the important um, sessions with the professors, with CVs. If there is time, I probably might want to take you guys through statement of purpose. Then I will send out the link again. Hey, we are done with these sessions. I now have a very good understanding, or I believe, I'm confident that you guys now understand what a CV needs to look like, uh, what a statement of purpose needs to be, uh, what schools you are expected to, I mean, shortlist. Then I'll, I'll send that link out. I'll send out the link, a new link. I mean, asking you guys to apply by the end of a certain date, maybe by the end of uh, maybe July or maybe somewhere mid-August. Then I'll receive the new documents in right and that i can shortlist if someone um again has a very good gpa but presents a very not so well formatted cv then i do have the understanding that he didn't follow the sessions right compared to you maybe anthony you now you follow the sessions you know what the cv needs to be if i'm to i mean invest in you with a 50 dollar i'm confident that hey this one just this person just didn't join the WhatsApp group page. He followed the sessions. He utilizes he utilized all the resources, and I'm confident that if I'm to give him this fifty dollar, he will utilize it uh, to the best of his uh, his ability. So that's the whole understanding here. We are using a different format compared to last year. So last year, we just took everyone's CV, regardless of whether the person has a good CV or not. We just basically use the GPA, which is basically on the transcript. But again, that didn't tell a good story. Even though most of most of them got in, a few didn't utilize the resources. Even if one person did not utilize my fifty dollar to the best of his ability, I'm I'm still not um, not happy because there are a lot of students who were still, I mean, waiting for that opportunity. You block them, so I rather use the resources wisely. Make sure everyone has a chance. So this year. Second application announcement will be going that, hey, you guys should be able to get your CVs by the close of this particular date using what resource, whatever resources that we provided and make sure we have them in. Then we can shortlist. I think that will be much easier for me. I can just pick up those who follow the sessions and make sure that, hey, this guy followed the sessions. He spent this much. I'd rather give him the money compared to someone who just didn't follow, but he or she is just um, using his GPA to get in. Yeah. Um, so Zofal, please go ahead if you have any question. Uh, let me know if I answered your question. Let me know if I answered your question. Anthony, please. Anthony, please. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. Yeah, I'm okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hello, Dr. Yeah. Doug. Yeah. 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 Please, uh, my, I have a question. Go ahead. Two questions. Mm -hmm. So the first question is, what if you want a one-page CV? Mm -hmm. So, like, I'm applying for a scholarship that requires me to to write a one-page CV. The last session we had for CV, I joined and I was able to prepare one page, but but the um it wasn't one. No, it was one page with a line on the next page. So when I uploaded it, the um the website rejected that one. Mm. And then secondly, um, for grad school, mm. um, do they really consider GPA that much? You know, some people, actually most people, they don't have a good GPA, but um, when it comes to um, maybe they didn't do the course, course they, they have passion right. in, in undergrad. Mm. So, <clears throat> but now they want to do, pursue their passion in graduate school. Mm. But because... They were not doing their passion course in undergrad. They didn't make the GPA. Mm. So, what is the advice for such person? Yeah, I think. Uh, I think. Uh, let me just quickly mute. Yeah. So with the with the CV, uh, if they require you to have a one page CV, um, I think you can play around with the LaTeX as I mentioned earlier. I mean, that's also back to Stan's question, where you add 
the volunteering. So if there's a need for you to remove something just for, for you to make it concise and uh, meet the one page requirements, you can equally do that. So here you can just take away styles that might not necessarily be relevant. So if there's a specific aspect of it that I observe is not relevant, I can advise you that, hey, uh, please take this out. This is not relevant. And that will just take you to the one page requirement as needed. So that will answer your first question. With, with your second question, yeah, for sure, with, um, with GP is a tricky one. Even uh, you might start on a very good note, but at the end of the day, something will come in. Maybe you lose a dad, you lose someone, you, you, you are sick. Of course, this didn't go well because of that. So. Um, that will impact you. Your GPA will not be good. That's fine. Um, so far as you you read the requirement on the web page. So some of the schools will require you to have a specific grade point, and that's a no no for them if you are below that. But that should that should then um discourage you. There are um programs here like the likes of graduate diploma. Um, these are programs that if, for instance, you're not meeting the required threshold or the GPA, you can use to come in. So graduate diploma should be something that uh, most of you can, uh, can for sure explore if you're having difficulties with the GPA, which for sure is due to some personal reasons, which I think I can personally I mean, speak to. Uh, so that would be my advice. Um, have a look at graduate diploma. Also be sure that um, the program you meet the minimum requirements before you even try. So if you're not meeting, if you don't meet the minimum requirement, explore the graduate diploma route. That should be uh, the the better approach. Um, let me know if you guys have any question. If there's any question in the chat, I can quick call it, pick it up. All right, Doc. Um, mm -hmm. This is a quick one. When yeah. you go to the lead text, mm -hmm. um, I like to interrupt. Because of the internet challenge. Um, so from all that we discussed, it means that you are going to forward your your CV and we play around it. Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to watch the video, mm -hmm. all that we have done already mm -hmm. yesterday. I want to watch it over and over so that I get it. So I prepare mm -hmm. a very good academic mm -hmm. CV. Mm -hmm. So what whatever I have from all that we are adding to the education. Mm -hmm. So most of my field will be professional. Mm -hmm. It means the CV I have will be tilted to professional rather, mm -hmm. but some can be linked to other ones as well. Exactly. I just want to take this kind of combination. Yeah. Yeah, I think that should that should be it. Like for instance, um, if this is the case that you are in education, and um, uh, maybe research assistantship is not something of your strong your strong um background, you might want to change the research research and um, experimental lab assistantship session. Change the heading to something that will suit you as an educational person right just change the heading and start playing around with changing the details that i i mentioned over there so that will be an addition for you in a way and subtraction from the cv right so these are some of the things that you can equally play along with along with yeah thank you so much i'm grateful sure sure yeah um any final questions i'm happy to take two more questions then we can call it a day good yeah, so I think this is good. Um, I'm running my experiments now. Um, I just hope that I can get a few more people to, I mean, sign up. If you're interested, please, um, uh, you can join the experiments um, page or you can get in touch with Zofa, she's here. I, I believe Araba might be here as well, or maybe Hafsa. Um, Hafsa, Araba, Rashid, um, Zofa, and who is the last one? I kind of forget. Oh yeah, Sharifa. Sharifa is also on the on the on the page. She can you call you, um I mean give you guys the background to the experiment. Yeah, so you can get in touch with them or get in touch with me directly. Happy to um, be of help. I hope um this has been useful. I wish you guys all the best. It's a very, very difficult journey, but it pays a lot if you are to I mean invest your time in it. Um here in the West, there are a lot of opportunities. Make sure you utilize them. And I wish you guys all the best in your journey. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Most welcome. Thank you. Okay. Bye.